So Simone, it's great to be with you again. Thank you for joining us on another webinar. And uh, I know people have been fascinated by the kind of discussions we've been having in the past. I think last time we were talking about the music of the plants and, and yeah. working with plants for healing, which uh, and I'm really excited to be getting my new device arriving probably in, in April and uh, looking, really looking forward to working with that. So on this time, we're, uh, we're going to focus on the, the relationship between kind of sounds, music, and, and how it is for musicians to be effective at working with healing sounds. And I know that as a musician yourself, uh, this is something that is really dear to your heart. And in fact, I think you run trainings around this uh, through your online and, and also in workshops and, and so on. So we can draw a lot on your experience here. As a musician, one thing that you probably have is um, a very good listening skill. So musicians are used to really tuning into the sound, yeah. listening really carefully because, you know, especially when you play um, together with other musicians, you know, the, being in tune is really fundamental yeah. because otherwise... Yeah. You know, and, and the same when you sing in a choir or, sure. or you know, singing with instruments. So it's all about really listening to what you're doing, either with your voice or with your instrument, and and how what you are bringing, how your sound um, enters the big picture, and how you know you're listening equally to your sound and to all the other sounds, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's a skill that you know you grow yep. as a musician, which is really really valuable in sound yeah. healing. Yeah. Be you become very sensitive in, uh, to sound and to small variations of sound especially yes. because that's what tuning yes. is about yes so if, if you realize that you're for example you're singing and you realize that your your note is off you know how to do that little adjustment that brings it back exactly yeah. where it should be yeah. and that's you know it's um yeah it's a really detailed yeah. listening skill yeah. especially for small variations and you know modulations sure. of yes. frequencies yeah so that's definitely uh, um, an advantage for musicians that want to go into the field of sound healing because they they are already um, prepared, let's say, yes. to to this um, careful listening, and and also the understanding of music. Normally, musicians come with with a, at least a basic understanding of sound of music, of frequencies, and, and especially musical intervals. Sure. You know, when you don't have to explain to a musician what an interval no. is, whereas when you're, when you're teaching sound healing to someone yeah. who's not a musician, you have to actually explain. Sure. An interval is the distance between two notes, you know, and that's yeah. how you build chords, that's how you yeah. build the harmony. And yeah, all, all yeah. That stuff. absolutely, absolutely. So they've got all of so that. that yeah, yeah that, that comes, you know, with being a musician, so that's all understood, and that's a big advantage. On the other hand, uh, what a musician probably often needs to do is to learn to um, to unlearn mm -hmm. the aspect of the performance, because obviously a musician is used to perform, yeah. and and that obviously it's not really the the purpose of um, healing music. Yes. So whether you're doing it in a, in a group session. Or maybe you're on a stage, but in, in the context of you know, of, of a healing session yeah. or the group session, yeah. or even if you're doing it one to one, mm -hmm. I've done that often. Usually sure. one to one, you're not performing. So that's the first thing mm -hmm. that's important to realize and unlearn. Mm -hmm. So you, you, um, I, I guess the main difference is that you, um, you need to get used to not drawing to your experience and your repertoire and your, mm -hmm. you know, I'm playing this now, so what shall I play next? Or this is what I can play, this, you know, and all that reasoning yes. that sometimes happens in real time as you're playing in a musician, as a musician, yeah. you, provide, yeah. you, know? yeah. you yeah. do all these sorts of things and you have a free flow, but that free flow is also supported by all your theoretical knowledge, so you know where to put stuff to make yeah. it sound good, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's probably the first thing that needs to be faded a little bit mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. your awareness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really, not not rely so much on your competence as a musician, but opening yourself to to the intuition. Right, 
right. and, and to really be a channel. So you're playing an instrument, but at the same time, you're, you are yourself an instrument. Mm. So mm. trying to transmit to your instrument something that comes to you from, from a, I don't know, many people call it different ways, you know, your higher self or sure. consciousness. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Or yeah. you could call it God or whatever. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great. Okay. So that's that's a really important point, I think, isn't it? You're you're talking about unlearning the, the kind of the whole performance kind of setup and, and allowing yourself to, 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 to enter into more of a way of being that is where you're the channel for and based on intuition you're guided to to create certain sounds. Yeah. Uh, to doing that. So yeah. in, in order to do that, you know, <laughs> have you got some like particular nuggets of wisdom, tips and techniques for how a musician might actually do that? Well, I think the, the main component of that is uh, a sincere wish of being of service. Great. So when, when that wish is, is true, honest, sincere, yeah. Yeah. then it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So that's obviously the first um, and, and most important requisite, I think. Yeah. And when it comes to tips or practical things, I would say that meditation is really important. Mm. So mm. any musician who wants to open themselves to this kind of work, if they're not already meditating, then I would recommend to start meditating. Sure. Sim very simple stuff, you know, not doesn't have to be a big committed practice of meditation. Yeah. But really... Yeah establishing that connection you know with your heart and and really yeah. learning to also distance yourself from from your mind you know and, and mm. finding yes. a good balance yes. between the mind and the heart yes. really some kind of basic meditation practice that helps that or mindfulness you know just being and really observing what happens what's going on with your breath and you know the, the way thoughts come and go sure. sure sure so i would say meditation is really really important for that just to develop um mm. the, the ability to open yourself up to receiving information in different ways yeah yeah so I mean, another great, yeah. thank you for that, and another great uh, benefit of, of being a musician, I think, is, is that you probably, as a musician, you've got, or as a singer, you know, you've got an idea of an understanding of the importance of dynamics of sound, so it's not always just the same kind of monotone sound, you know, or it doesn't, even if you use a variety of instruments, you can still maintain the same kind of quality of sound, you know, yeah. then that, yeah. you know, there's value of, of maintaining a steadiness of that. But if it's the same sound with every client, every session, every group you do, then there's no dynamics there. And, 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 and that's not necessarily very healing. And so yeah. our musicians would really understand the value of dynamics and how to, how to, how to kind of work with that in a way so that, yeah. you know, the value of more quieter sounds and louder sounds and, and on all, all, all of that. And, and then also an, another thing is the, the, you know, just the sensitivity to the, the, the value of, 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 of silence kind of within, um, Absolutely. within, you know, out of which the sounds emerge and back, back they go again. And, yeah. and, and so musicians would really understand this and that's, that's fantastic. Um, and so, you know, musicians in many ways have a really good head start when it comes to working with, with sound. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to say something about that because I, um, silence is absolutely, I think that's really one of the most important yeah. things that you just said. But I'd like to say that um, now we're talking, you know, we're saying the word musicians and we're generalizing, but yeah. really what makes a difference is, is your personality. Yeah. It, it really comes down to your personality because I have met musicians who, you know, would go into a jam session and pay no attention to whatever is going on around them and just do their own thing. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And and obviously, also musicians that are completely sensitive and open and yeah. you know really respond. Yeah, yeah. And and this is true for non-musicians so someone who's learning sound healing and is not coming with uh, from a background of being a musician mm -hmm. it's going to be 
a personality skill also being able to really listen, to really be gentle and soft because I personally, what I found in my experience as a sound healer is that being gentle and delicate with sound is really important Absolutely. because when you have a client, you know, and a client is lying there, often going very quickly into deep relaxation because one of the first things that happened with sound is deep relaxation. Absolutely. So you have, you have someone else that's completely trusting you, lying there, completely relaxed. You can't just bang something, you know, <laughs> and being really loud. So, yeah. yeah. And, and that's, that's uh, that's a personal skill you know yeah. so that's cultivating that sensitivity and really always entering someone else's space with grace and yeah. really and then if if it's necessary in a sound session that the sound gets really loud and powerful like mm -hmm. often with gongs you know yeah yeah yeah. things get really loud and it can be really cathartic and it yes. can be a really good effect but you know always building it up and up sure. and up and having that sensitivity of really you're entering someone else's very intimate space. Yeah. So yeah. whether you're whether or not you're a musician, it's really a, um, a personal skill to yes. be yeah. respectful and, yeah. and, and, and delicate. Yeah. yeah, that's really important. That's really important. And, and what about, you know, this in terms of unlearning things? Because as a musician, you know, we, people are trained to, to understand a lot about the music, um, the, the theories, the way it all fits together. And, the, you know, and concepts, is, especially for us guys, you know, it becomes like a really uh, interesting and important element of it. So <laughs> what's it like then as a musician yeah. to, in, in the sound yeah, well, context? Uh, as a musician, another risk uh, that musicians have is that they start tripping on on the theoretical part. Yeah, and and I'm one of those. So <laughs> okay. you know, when when I <laughs> yeah. when I when I create music, when I produce music, so I'm not talking about a live group healing session. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm talking about me sitting in my studio yeah. with my instruments and producing a recording. Yeah, then. I really apply all my um, all my knowledge, and and I actually like to experiment. I like to uh, apply all these things about different tunings, different frequencies, and, and you know how sure. they combine with rhythms, sure. and it's, it's it's really fascinating. And and in the end, because you're doing your process on your own, what matters is the final product. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what that's what people are getting. They're yeah. getting your the recording that you're gonna put out there when it's finished. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what you've done <laughs> to get there. You of know? course, yeah. <laughs> but if you if you start tripping in a in in a live situation with with people, you know, lying down and a nice uh, dim light environment, and 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 then you start getting interested in what you're doing, and you know, and that that can go in really. Uh, it can go in the wrong direction. Nothing bad is going to happen, but um, mm. You're it's not be as powerful yeah. as it could be, you know, yeah. because it's coming more from the mind. It's not coming from your whole being. Yes. You know, from, yes. from the intelligence of your heart combined with the intelligence mm. of your mind and, and, and listening to what's happening in the space, you know. So that's what makes uh, um, a sound healing performance effective and powerful sure, sure sure so that's definitely a risk that especially male musicians yeah. have to really get into the theory and, yeah yeah which which is cool it's cool when you're producing music and you can do really all sorts of interesting yeah. things yeah. but it can get in the way of yeah. um um of the real flow when you're live with people. Yeah, yeah, and that touches back in. I mean, I know these things are all connected, but it touches back in with what you're talking about, about being the channel and being open to the intuition and, and, and the kind of sensitivity and the listening that needs to go with that. Because there's also, the listening is not just to the sounds that you're creating or we're creating, but it's, it's also listening to something around the, you know, the, the, what's happening in the room or with the, with the individual who's there or the group of people. It's listening to, almost like qualities of, of energy that, um, yeah. uh, that uh, have their own frequency in a way, although maybe it's not audible, but it's being sensitive to, to that kind of thing. And that's where I think the heart intelligence comes in, 
It's because I think, it, in my experience, it's through the intelligence of the heart. That have, the heart is an organ of perception, and that's a way that we can really listen. So it's not just listening through our ears or even yeah. through our skin and bones, but it's listening with our heart as well seems yeah. important to me. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, as you know, there's all this research that about the, the heart and the magnetic fields of the heart. Yeah. And the heart actually has a, a, a wider field than the brain, yeah. electromagnetic field. Yeah. So yeah. when you're in a room with other people, um, the, the the heart the field of the heart is so large that you're you know intertwined with everyone Absolutely. else's yeah so and and if you if you're tuned into your heart in that moment there's so much information exactly. you know exactly. so much exchange yeah. of information yeah. happening yeah and, and that's exactly what you were saying that listening with your heart yes yeah in that kind of situation is really important yeah 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 and I suppose for me, what, what, that, what, what that means is it's about being aware of subtle... I mean, you were talking about how we can listen to the audible sounds as a musician or singer and, and be very aware and conscious of the, the subtle variations in, in sound, you know, the, the kind of the semitones or the, you know, the, 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 you know or, or even more subtle kind of differences in frequencies between that in the tuning and so on. But so it's the same with the heart, is that we can become aware of subtle variations in the sensations and the feelings yeah. around the heart, yeah. and that's what yeah. provides the source of information, um, yeah. you know, and the intelligence that goes with it. In my experience, yeah, 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 and it's it is my experience all the time. You know, I go to an event, I know that I have um, a sound session to do with a group of people. That often happens in festivals, and yeah. I know that I normally improvise, but for me, for my personality, I normally need to prepare something. Yes. So I just need to, okay, I'm going to start with this, then I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. Even though I know that 50 or 60% of the time, that's not going to happen. <laughs> because yeah. what ha it just helps me to start. Sure, so I do sure. my, you know, I do my opening, and then it often happens that it just, everything I, I prepared just doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. It will not work because I'm, I'm getting information at the moment and say, okay, I thought that after the guitar, I would just play the drum. But no, the drum today is no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No one wants the drum in here, you know? <laughs> and, and that's it. That's, yeah. that's just the way it is. And, yeah. and you just go with whatever is happening. And you have to trust. You have yeah. to trust that kind of intuition. That's important and that's a, little bit, that's a little bit the, the battle between the mind and the heart. You yes. know, it's always about trusting. Yes. Because the mind has its own plan and mm. said yeah but now i need to play the drum because that's that's what we've decided <laughs> yeah. and the heart says trust me no yeah. one wants to hear a drum yeah. right now you know yeah yeah so yeah. when when you get such feelings such um yeah intuitive feelings then really trust and yeah and go and go with it yeah and that's... and and never mind uh, also for a musician is really important never mind if what you are asked to do in a certain moment, in a certain place, and in a certain time, it's the basic of the basic of the simplest of the simplest. If you are required to just playing one note for five minutes, just do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's as a it. musician, as a musician, you think it can't be, you know. <laughs> yeah. At some point, I want to do something else. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's the kind of humbleness that it's needed, really. Right. Right. You're there to serve the group. You're there to serve people. You're not there to perform and show to... off your skills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know that people are. Oh, you're a really good musician. Wow, that was great. No, that's not, it's not <laughs> about that. Yeah. It's about people entering a different space and yeah. whether they give you feedback or not. Mm -hmm. Because some people they don't have words. Mm -hmm. If if the work has really happened after that, they don't have words. Mm -hmm. And and that's fine, you know. So if people leave without giving you a lot of feedback, you have to trust that what you've done has done what yeah, it was needed. You absolutely, know? No, that's a good point. And then sometimes people come and, and give you the most unexpected feedbacks. You know, they tell you that when you play that note for five minutes, it was just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, yeah you yeah. just have to accept it and yeah, really yeah. be humble. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. 
Okay, uh, Simona, so thank you very much again for, for sharing all, all that with us. I think it's been really interesting, fascinating for me, I'm sure for many other people. And I know that you cover all this in a lot more depth through your own uh, courses online and also, uh, you know, in, in one-to-one. I think you support people one-to-one as well. Yeah. And, and yeah. people, uh, you know, can, can really get in touch with you. And uh, so... Uh, thank you again. And of course, we're going thank to be you. around to take any more um, questions and comments yeah. that people have got. So thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you.